I was born in Hilo, and I was born in 1934, December 19, 1934. And, you know, uh, we had no television back in those days. We had uh, newspapers but, uh, and also radios, and that's about it. And as a form of entertainment for us youngsters, we you know, to go to the beach. And we always hung around the Kyokoha area, and they had a lot of brackish water, and the ponds were very similar to this, which, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time Oh, swimming, fishing, doing all kinds of mischievous things when you're young. But that always, uh, you know, kept me going. And then I started swimming back about ninth grade, and I was uh, fortunate to uh, oh, receive a full scholarship to Indiana University. Uh, swimming was my career in college, and I made a major in health, physical education, and recreation and got my bachelor's degree. And after my swimming career was over, I put part of it into the military and then came back to grad school and uh, taught for a while in Chicago, Illinois, a town called Hinsdale, and coached over there swimming. And uh, after that, uh, when I received my master's degree uh, back in 64, there's an opening uh, for a job at Kamehameha Schools. I, uh, I was able to get the job as a swimming coach and a teacher and uh, I've been there 33 years before I retired but in between those years uh, I spent a lot of time coming back here to this island because uh, I used to love my diving and uh, I had a lot of friends you know to go out diving and we'd dive all over the island as much as we could and uh, thanks to friends of mine like uh, Punchikin, Castle Kaili Mai, uh, Roy Nagata, these were all legends of, of the sport here in Hawaii. For old people like me to hunt fish, it's pretty tough. Uh, I got. I'm humbled now, being uh, able to see what uh, is happening in the ocean. Uh, the fish wasn't as tame as it used to be. In fact, I thought I thought maybe I was a little smarter than the fish when I was younger. But now that I'm older, finding the fish are way way smarter than I am.
Uh, this is my new book. Uh, I think you'll find this very interesting. Uh, it covers uh, the history uh, of spearfishing and how people actually forged for f uh, food and got into the ocean to uh, start uh, getting fish and water in the water. As I started showing people old diving equipment, uh, I realized that uh, people were interested and the history of spearfishing and they want to see a lot of the old uh, equipment that I had so this prompted me to do this uh, book and, and then of course the emphasis will be on our uh, Hawaii spearfishing history uh, of our competitive divers and what it has gone to at the present time. I brought along some old wooden goggles uh, that divers of the old days used. In fact, in, I used them myself uh, back in the late 40s, right after World War II. And these, some of these uh, goggles were made out of how wood, uh, such as this one here. Uh, this was made out of plumeria, and also this one here made out of bamboo, and various types of soft wood in Hawaii. Uh, it was interesting because uh, when I was a little kid, we tried to make some of them, and the hardest part was cutting the glass. And when we cut the glass, we had to have some form of glue to uh, seal the uh, glass to the goggles itself. And what we would do is, on a hot day, pick up tar from the road and put it on the bevel edge and put the glass on. And once you started diving in the water, uh, the pressure would compress against the uh, glass so it'll fit right into place and of course you have to c uh, cut the uh, wood to the contour of your face. This is the original Hawaiian sling that uh, the old people do, uh, dove with. I used this myself. It was a very effective uh, spearfishing equipment. Uh, I remember Jack Ackerman back in 1953 uh, when I was senior in high school a speared a 127-pound world record lua with this type of uh, spear gun. You have a spear shaft that was about six feet long, and uh, this was like uh, shooting bow and arrow. Uh, you'd aim at the fish and release, and the rubber be uh, propelling the spear through the uh, stick itself. And this was a real effective uh, tool back then. Of course. Today, you have high-tech guns, and uh, very few people use them. This was the uh, old hinge gun, and what, what this is right here is an old hinge from the door. And they screwed it onto here and put the spear shaft through this hole, and you'd cock the gun. And how, how it would be locked is that you'd push this forward. And uh, one of the thing about this was that uh, that you could use this for night diving very effectively because you had one flashlight in one hand and a uh, hinge gun in the other hand and of course you had to be very cautious about this because you had to treat it like a, a firearm. Uh, a little tap of the tr uh, trigger or the hinge and the spear would be released. and. Uh, we used this for many, many years also, for night diving especially. Here's another hinge gun. This is made out of metal. And uh, also, it, this is unique because the rubber that you see here uh, was a old, I think, was an old refrigerator rubber that would, had a lot of elasticity. And I noticed uh, here you have a short section for a long shot. And this will be 
the long section here for the spear shot would be for a cave when you have to go in into a cave to shoot a spear gun. So this is a kind of a unique spear gun in that sense. Now this uh, spear gun here is a modification of a gun handle hinge gun. The hinge is located on the top here and the trigger in this section here. Put the spear shaft through here and uh, shoot it like a gun also. And this is kind of unique. I've never seen one like this and this was just given to me in recent years by Shinki Sakurai.